All right, so let's get started with the most basic, the, the introduction of what we're gonna be talking about in this course. What I hope you're gonna get out of this video is a little glimpse of the overall perspective of what we're gonna be looking at through this course and through this time that we spend together and how excited it is, or excited I am to teach you this because this is one of those things that's just amazing. So I wanna start by saying that this entire course is based around a framework. Now the framework that we're gonna use is, is shown right here on the screen. Is this the only framework in the world? The answer is no but this is a framework. And so what I find important is that we actually put on a, a pair of glasses, let's say, a way that we look out at, at the world of consumer behavior. And this one happens to be one that I really appreciate and enjoy, and it's a perfectly good one. Now there are lots of different frameworks and, and the, the concepts that you're gonna be learning can adapt towards different frameworks, but we're just gonna go through and make sure that we talk about each one of these pieces as we go through this course, and you're gonna be able to become a much better marketing individual because of it. And that's my goal here, is to help you go out into the workforce, or if you're currently working right now, become better at what you do in marketing because you understand consumer behavior. Now this is one of those untapped secrets, I would say, in the marketing world. So often, what we have is people go out and they're like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this little uh, crazy message that goes out. And so they just shoot something out into the ether, let's just say, and they, they say, you know what, we're gonna open up a new business and we're gonna tell everybody because we're gonna make a website. We're gonna tell people about it and then they're gonna come and they're gonna visit, we're gonna be rich, everybody's gonna be happy. That is not how any of this works, okay? And it's so funny because I see time and time again when students come into my class and they're working marketing and they come up to me and they show me a website they've built or something and what they've done is they've completely reversed the process. And, and that is that they think about what the business wants to say instead of what the consumer behavior is going to be when they interact with it. So that's what's so important about this class. And I hope, my hope is that what you can do is you can harness some of this information and become a powerful marketer because I know you can when you incorporate this information. So we're gonna go over external influences to internal influences. The, my favorite part of the course is the self-concept and lifestyle and then how decisions are made and then how that all wraps back around to, to do it all over again. So I wanna start by just defining consumer behavior. Consumer behavior is the study of individuals, groups, or organizations, and the processes that they use to select, secure, use, and dispose of products, services, experiences, or ideas to satisfy needs and the impacts that these processes have on the consumer and society. All that is incredible. It's a really long definition, but there's a few words in there that I just wanna hone in on. And it's actually two words, satisfy needs, okay? If you learn nothing else from this entire course, what our goal as marketers is, is to help a consumer or an individual that we're trying to influence satisfy a need. That's it. And far too often we, we flip that around and we say, hey, the business wants to tell people that it's 20% off and therefore people will come. That's not how it works we need to give the consumer a reason to satisfy need while also addressing what the business needs to get done. So that's why we get paid the big bucks is to figure out how to do those things. But that's one of the most important pieces of this entire course. So now we have a framework. We're gonna come back to this over and over again as we go through this whole conversation that we're gonna have. But I think it's important that we just have a stable spot to start with. And this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna study individuals, groups, and organizations, and the processes that they use, essentially what they go through internally to figure out how to satisfy a need, okay? And, and I love that part of it. So there's a few ways that we can, you know, different applications that we can use consumer behavior. One, and my favorite, is marketing strategy. We're gonna do a lot of conversation about that here. Um, number two would be regulatory policy. When, like, what happens when the government gets involved? How, how can they stop and start things? And we're gonna go much more into depth in this as we go on. Uh, social marketing, like what about a cause? What if what if we're trying to help people stop smoking? What what if it's about cancer? You know, like what, what if we're trying to just educate people? We can do that with social marketing. And finally, informed individuals. And I think this one's really important for us because the goal as we go through this is going to be to understand ourselves. And I think far too often in marketing, we think, oh, that doesn't apply to us. That doesn't apply to me. This is something that 
I, I'm smarter and I'm gonna trick these people into it. And then we go and make a stupid purchase or we make a stupid decision and we don't realize that we got taken in by some kind of marketing uh, spin that happened. And it's because it satisfied our needs. I'm not saying all marketing is bad. In fact, quite contrary. I think that one of the things that makes it most powerful is if we can satisfy needs, we have happy customers, we have happy people that leave that whole um, that ecos uh, ecosystem that we create, and our bosses are happy because we've helped them create sales and generate revenue or stop people from smoking or give an awareness to breast cancer. So there's all sorts of applications for consumer behavior, but I just wanna harp really quickly <laughs> on one little point about marketing, which is in marketing, far too often I think we get a look at like a Coca-Cola or we look at an Apple and we're like, that's the marketing I wanna do. And yes, we all do. I worked with Apple for a while um, at Pearson and it was an amazing experience. They have an incredible marketing team, love their vision, love their the way they look at stuff, but not everybody gets to do that. So we need to figure out, okay, rubber hits the road. How do we get this to work for mom and pa shop if they hire us to do something? How can we include these principles to make better business decisions for that company? And that's what this is all about. So I'm very happy to be sharing that with you. Uh, there's a whole concept of marketing strategy that goes along with consumer behavior. And so what we're looking for is we're gonna go from the bottom up on, the, on this. And we're gonna say that first we wanna analyze what's going on in the marketplace. We wanna look at all the different pieces that are happening. Then we move into, okay, what segment of that market are we going to serve? And then we develop a strategy and all this is gonna be wrapped up into your marketing plan project. So this that's why it's a great idea to, to be paying attention to this. Finally, we wanna, so after we've come up with all three of those things, then we jump into, okay, how's the consumer's decision going to be made? And there's lots of different ways that we'll cover as we go through this. And finally, what was the outcome? Were they happy? Did it help society? Was it a business purchase? Was it a person? Like these are all wonderful things that we're gonna be able to, to look at. So as we um, go through these components, the first one is market analysis components. And we have four aspects of that that we can cover. And so the first one is, the consumers. And so consumers are very important because they're the people that usually purchase, <laughs> right? And so they're the people that what we're gonna do is we, we wanna understand who is in this market. Who are the people that are actually trying to, or potentially trying to buy our products? The second thing we need to understand is the company, who we're working with. Are we capable and able to adapt to what is being required of the market? Um, it's very important to understand like, you know, you could run a marketing campaign at a company and it is not culturally acceptable or you might not be able to get the digital processes working in time to, um, to instill a campaign that you might be thinking of. So we can come up with crazy ideas, but can the company actually do it? That's the, that's the hard part to ask ourselves. We have to analyze that. The next piece is the competitors. Like once we put this out in the, um, once we look at this market, is the competition too fierce for us? Or is it easy? Is someone wounded? Can we pounce on that? Like there's all sorts of different pieces, but you wanna know, okay, who are the basic players and who are we worried about? And then take a really wide view. I would say it's really important. Far, uh, far too often we look at like our one direct competitor and we don't realize that there are ancillary other people out there that could potentially come in and, and be a competitor in this space. And finally, the conditions, are they right? Is the condition right for us to do that? In fact, um, a, a good successful firm would probably ask, is this gonna help or hurt sales if we if we go in and do some kind of marketing piece to this? And in fact, there's a fascinating piece from the Reader's Digest in the 1950s where they ran an ad in their, in their magazine, Ford did, excuse me, Ford Motor Company ran an ad, famous case study. And afterwards they did a uh, an analysis and they did some research and it turned out that the people that saw the ad actually bought less Fords than the people that did not see the ad. So it was better for them to not run this advertisement than to run it. And I think we, we don't think about that very often as marketers. In fact, we think, oh, everything we're gonna do is gonna be amazing. So we have to realize that there's a like a stable point and we can actually increase or decrease what's happening in the marketplace based on conditions. So we wanna be very aware of that. The next phase of that little uh, graphic that I showed you is market segmentation. So if we look out and we see all the, like uh, this is one of my favorite things to do when consulting. You come in and you say, all right, you have an incredible company here, great. Who is your market? 
and I've heard this so many times. <laughs> I'd be rich if I put a price tag on how many times I've heard this with consulting. And the, the client will say, everybody, everybody should have our product. You're like, well, let, let me just make an example. Let's just pretend um, I'm consulting with a weight loss company. And the weight loss company, I come in and I say, okay, who is your market? And they're like, hey, we have such a good program. Anybody can lose weight with this. I'm like, oh, hmm, okay. So typically my answer to that is, if we just talk to everybody, we talk to nobody. We have to find a segment or a niche or niche, whatever you want to call it, um, a niche where this is the group that we're going to go after because of several factors. And there are different things that we can do, but when we, when we identify which market we want to go into, there's four steps to that. The first is identifying product related need sets. So does this group of people need what our product or service has? Grouping customer with similar need sets. So maybe we have three different groups that can fit into one piece here and say, okay, are we, why would we segment it or could we maybe combine those? I will caution you that you should always try to make it smaller before you make it bigger, that group, okay? So you wanna find the most minute group of people, that smallest niche with enough money in the market that they can purchase it and make it worth your while, but that will be able to um, have a cohesive message come out. And then you wanna start describing each group. It's very important that as you create these market segmentations that you uh, start developing a, an understanding of who that is because as we're gonna learn through this entire course, that is the purpose of consumer behavior is understanding how your consumer makes their choices so that you can be effective in helping satisfy their needs. <laughs> Hopefully you're gonna get that. Um, and then finally, selecting an attractive segment to serve. So you might have five choices, and once again, which one are you gonna grab and which one are you gonna use? Now, one of the things I love about this class is the book. And I wanna just show you, you'll get a bunch of tables like this. So this is a criterion score. Um, you can you just go through and evaluate a market segment. And you can see how attractive it is. Now, here's a little secret, and you might listen to me and you might not, but here's some wisdom. When you go to a job and you are working in marketing, I guarantee you that 90% of the places you're gonna work have nothing like this, <laughs> okay? They've all studied it, they've all looked at it, but they've forgotten about it. So you can be a genius just taking something in like this and saying, hey, why don't we do a quick analysis between the different market segments that we're looking at and see which one looks most attractive to us. And just go down and read them. You don't have to use this version. You can come up with different ones, but I think this is a great basic place to start. So that's one of the secrets of this textbook is if you can keep all of these tables, you'll have a lot of things that you can look really smart with when you're at work, all right? So you wanna go through and see if it's attractive. And then you wanna develop a marketing strategy based on that. Okay, so um, how will we provide superior customer value to our target market? That's a great question to ask. And then you have to go through, okay, so if we're gonna do that, we need to go into our marketing mix. And so that's, um, you know, how are we going to deliver that to them? And, and we're gonna get way in depth in that, so I don't need to cover that right now. But these are just some of those basics. And then we have to look at the decisions that are made. So once they interact with us, once they get involved with all those things, um, we have to ensure that the decision that's made is something that's gonna satisfy need. And then, um, I like what it says, the firm can succeed only if consumers see a need that its product can solve become aware of a product and its capabilities and decide that it's the best available solution, proceed to buy it and become satisfied with the results of the purchase. So I'm sure we've all had a purchase where we bought it and we're, you know, later we're like, oh, why did I buy that? I'm never gonna buy that, that um, brand again or I'm never gonna buy that type of product again. Those are negative experiences. Okay, and so we wanna make sure that we have the right piece there and that the outcome is, pos uh, the outcome is a positive one. So when we're looking at outcomes, when we, when we address these three types of outcomes here, first a firm outcome, are they gonna make more sales? Are they gonna make money off of this? Are their customers gonna be satisfied when they get it? Um, an individual outcome, is the individual satisfied? Do they feel good about this process? Do they, um, do they have injurious consumption? Is it hurting them when they do it? Um, and societal outcomes, there's economic outcomes that can happen to society. There's physical environment outcomes. There's social welfare. Like, is this good for the environment if society does it? Um, let's just take the easiest one, which is smoking. In fact, let's pivot that. We're gonna have a, a <clears throat> conversation about this later, but vaping. 
Is vaping good or bad for society? Is it good or bad for individuals? Is it good or bad for firms? How do we talk about that? So we can go through, we can look at something like this saying, okay, are we creating satisfied customers? If our product and our competitors' products, they're gonna go through this little chain and we're gonna see, okay, did they see that A, our product was good, B, that it had superior value that was expected when they sold it, did they, did they feel good about it? When they perceived, when they got it, was it what I wanted? And then some satisfaction at the end of it, like, okay, was I happy or not? And so those are just the basics of consumer behavior. And I'm gonna talk more about that in the next video, but this is just good to, to get us started in this whole thing.